Okay, so if, okay, first of all, let me thank uh, Randall and Adam for organizing this exciting workshop, especially in this difficult time. Okay, so this is a title I was given, and uh, yeah, identifying new physics from high resolution spectra. And uh, yeah, my talk consists basically consists of two parts. The first part is a uh, practical, practical, practical part. Uh, where I will be discussing the non-standard spectral analysis using XPEC. And uh, yeah, actually I was going to uh, talk about uh, table model, but I decided to skip it because the time is limited. So if you're interested in, uh, I suggest you uh, see uh, this URL uh, for detail. And I will focus on the, uh, yeah, how to make a non-standard spectral analysis using the atom, atom db based model bit part. And the later part is more about physics. And uh, kind of my uh, take home message is, uh, you know, if you would like to find a new physics, uh, please be familiar with, th this is a message especially for the students, please be familiar with uh, software and atomic physics and don't deal with them as a black box physics. Okay, so let me start my first part uh, with a kind of uh, advertisement of our recent paper published, not published yet, uh, but posted to archive recently. Uh, this is an RGS observation of the supernova and N132D. And I would like to acknowledge uh, the lead author of this paper. Uh, she's a student, uh, Hitomi Suzuki, uh, who, uh, who helped me in preparation of this presentation as well. And, uh, Actually, uh, her first name is Hitomi. This is, uh, you know, so if I will probably refer to Hitomi without or Hitomi's work, but this doesn't mean asteroids, okay? So, uh, okay, let me show uh, uh, the result uh, briefly, just briefly. And uh, N132D is the extra brightest supernova remnant in the large Magellanic cloud. And because of that, uh, this uh, object was is selected, one of the calibration targets for the XM and Newton. Uh, therefore, the total exposure of the all-axis observation exceeds 300 kiloseconds. And if you include off-axis observation as well, then the total exposure exceeds actually uh, one, one million seconds. And uh, because uh, the uh, field of view of the RGS is narrow, narrower one than the EPIC, so uh, we focus on the uh, all-axis observation. And this is the spectrum uh, where we integrate all the all-axis observation all together. And uh, okay, uh, I'm not going to explain the technique uh, detail, but uh, let me briefly go over the main result. Uh, first, we uh, newly detected uh, more than a dozen weak emission lines uh, from these elements, uh, which enabled uh, us to constrain the abundances of these elements, uh, whose uh, caching emission is actually out of the uh, light band path of the RGS. Uh, which is, I think, remarkable. And uh, yeah, in the, yeah, this, this blue and green, uh, the second order spectrum. And in this spectrum, uh, we successfully resolved the neon, neon nine uh, for reading and resonance line. Uh, uh, and using these emission lines, we performed the diagnostic uh, of using emission line uh, that revealed uh, the evidence of non equilibrium ionization. Uh, inter interestingly, this is the first uh, result uh, for this object. And also we found a uh, slightly enhanced forbidden to resonance uh, flux ratio. Okay, so now here, here's uh, the question, uh, mainly for the student. Uh, okay, you have this spectra, this spectra, and how do you measure the line flux of oxygen, uh, oxygen seven and nine, uh, uh, now nine? Think about it. And I say, I suspect most of, uh, most of the answers uh, will be uh, fitting with the uh, fitting the spectrum with the Bremer swan for the continuum component and the main Gaussian for the line emission. But this uh, procedure is not uh, appropriate because continuum emission is not just Bremer swan, but also consists of two photon decay component and radiative recombination continuum. And these features uh, will be enhanced in, especially in the low temperature plasma. And also these features are not no longer negligible uh, in the high resolution spectrum. So uh, the AtomDB website uh, recommends to use a so-called no-line no model. 
uh, which uh, consists of blameless role and all of these three uh, continuum components. So, okay, uh, if you follow the instruction, then you will see the continuum, only continuum component like this. And then uh, if you, uh, uh, you, you can add a uh, number of Gaussian to measure each in, uh, the flux of each individual line. But, okay, uh, I don't like to do that because I'm too lazy to add 100 uh, of the Gaussian component and to see uh, the long list of the Gaussian component in the terminal of the XPEC. So uh, instead of, uh, of using this, uh, we, this is what we did. Uh, so we, used, uh, we removed only the uh, emission line we are interested in uh, from the APEC NEI model like this, and then add some Gaussian only to these, uh, uh, these uh, emission lines. So, okay, uh, let's call uh, no diagnostic line model hereafter. And uh, well, after we published th that paper, uh, some people asked us how we did that. So I decided to use this opportunity to explain how we did. And, but uh, the most important thing is that uh, if you understand, uh, this is you know, what I like to uh, stress. So if you understand how the uh, software works and how the supporting files uh, structures, uh, you can perform non-standard non analysis as you want. So what I'm going to show is just an example. And uh, keep in mind, this is my message. Okay, so okay, uh, let me explain how we did. And the step one is a preparation. Uh, go, go to the uh, AutoMDB website and uh, click here, then you will find this, uh, these boxes and uh, you will find the level of the transition you are interested in. So since we are now interested in oxygen seven, uh, so you choose oxygen from this box, box and then oxygen seven, this box. And if you click, when you click this uh, bottom, then you will find, uh, you know, this window will show up. And uh, yeah, this is a list of the level, uh, defined level number and uh, configuration and the energy of the level. And since this is a ground state, uh, these values correspond to the energy of the emission line. So, so you can find this is a forbidden line, uh, level for the forbidden line transition, and this is a level uh, line. So you should uh, remember these numbers just for, uh, for your information. Uh, these are the number for the uh, important uh, transition uh, defined in AtomDB. And then uh, you will modify the uh, line file uh, for the XPEC, but uh, you know, don't uh, overwrite the original file. Uh, the file is found uh, in this directory under the here soft, here, here soft. And, but uh, yeah, you should, you should take a backup for the original file. And in here, uh, I copy the original, original file uh, to, the, to my, uh, the current directory with this name. And you should also uh, copy uh, the com uh, so-called compfits file uh, with the same root of the file name. And now they, uh, you delete the diagnostic line from all the extension of the line fits file. So you should modify this file. And uh, if you open uh, this file, you, you will see this, uh, this extension. And uh, there are 50 ex extension corresponding to each temperature grid. But according to Adam's uh, talk uh, this Monday, uh, the latest version of AtomDB has 200 temperature grid. So which means that uh, there are 200 uh, extension following this fast extension. And uh, if you click one of them, uh, you will find the list of the emission line. And this is a wavelength and uh, uh, this is the emissivity uh, for the given temperatures. And uh, uh, the list of the count, list of the counts, uh, identification of the, of the emission, and the element is a, a, a atomic number, and ion is a mm, charge number plus one. So, uh, so, so this uh, corresponds to the forbidden line, and these are, these correspond to resonance line. So you should delete them. Uh, for instance, if you use uh, F tools, uh, this is an expression uh, to remove this. Uh, delete. Uh, these rows, but uh, since you have to uh, delete all of them uh, from all of the uh, 50 or 200 extensions, uh, you shouldn't do this uh, by hand. So you, you should uh, write a script to run 
And uh, if you're interested in me, I'm happy to provide my Python script to do that. And now, uh, okay, the preparation uh, is done. So you uh, now you can uh, analyze your spectrum. And in our case, this is a, uh, these are the RG spectrum from N1 circuit to D. And uh, we found in this, in our case, uh, we found that uh, the spectra require uh, at least three components with different temperature uh, in order to reproduce the, mainly uh, the wide range of the charged population of ion. Uh, in, uh, for, in, for instance, uh, this emission line from uh, relatively high, highly ionized ion uh, can be reproduced uh, only when we introduce three third component. So but this is just an approximated model, ad hoc model. And then uh, replace uh, your NEI model, original NEI model with the non-diagnostic no, no line NEI model that you just made. And this is the uh, zoom up spectrum around the oxygen emission. And if you execute this command, uh, then uh, the, the line you just deleted uh, will, will be gone. And then you can uh, measure the emission line uh, flux directly using Gaussian model uh, or whatever. And yeah, that's all. But this uh, method was especially uh, useful for our, our case because our data, uh, our observation of RGS with, uh, uh, with RGS, uh, observation of n one circuit 2 d with RGS consisted of nine observations with largely different, different low angles like this. And as uh, Srina just uh, mentioned, uh, the RGS is a grating. Grating is a dispersive spectrometer. So if you observe uh, the extended object, the line spread function uh, largely depends on the projection profile. Uh, along the dispersion direction like this. So we basically, we cannot merge the spectra altogether. So we uh, independently analyze the spectra from each uh, observation. And uh, finally, uh, we calculated the mean, uh, this is the case for the oxygen seven, uh, probably resonance line, and I'm oh, sorry about that. And yeah, we calculated uh, the mean value uh, finally uh, by taking into account the uh, uh, uncertainty prop propagation like this. So, so this me our method was very useful for this case. And then, uh, although I don't uh, discuss detail, uh, uh, we were able to perform the line, line, diagnost line diagnostic to constrain the electron and ionization temperature and compare the observed and the uh, theoretical line ratio uh, of the forbidden to resonance line. So, uh, actually, uh, we uh, applied the same method to uh, the Hitomi observation. This, this is asteroid, asteroid observation of the pale cluster. Uh, so this is a uh, yeah, SXS, Hitomi SXS spectrum uh, fitted with uh, uh, APEC model uh, from which uh, these emissions, uh, forbidden and red line of ion, ion 20, 24 uh, is excluded. And then uh, we measured the uh, flux of this emission line and compared the, uh, the obtained flux ratio of uh, resonance to formula uh, lines uh, with the simulation, uh, you know, simulation with and without resonance scattering and which confirmed uh, the, that the resonance scattering is required to, uh, to reproduce the observation. So yeah, that's all uh, for this uh, method. But I think uh, ideally the software should allow user to do this kind of analysis more easily. And I would like to point out that uh, SPEX has a function to, to do that, basically to do that, to eliminate the emission from a certain ion uh, by executing this. Uh, but uh, with this uh, command, uh, the all of the oxygen seven emission line will be gone. So it will be e even greater if we can, uh, we can eliminate uh, just one single emission line, which will be helpful for future high resolution spectroscopy. Okay, uh, how how much time do I have? Five, ten. You have another ten minutes, including ten minutes. questions. Okay. Including questions. Okay, okay, okay. So the left part is uh, the more about physics. So. Okay, let me discuss the pros uh, prospect for the emission line diagnostics uh, 
with the future collimate observation. And just a quick reminder, uh, the, the uh, micro collimator is non dispersive spectrometer. So this allows us to perform, uh, obtain uh, spectrum and imaging information simultaneously, unlike grating observation. As Shrina just uh, mentioned, the in grating observation of the extended object, the spectrum and imaging information are degenerated with each other. So this is the really great advantage, especially for extended objects like supernova remnant and clusters. And I will focus on supernova remnant here. So, okay, let me uh, show some examples from our uh, CRISM observation planning. And I, this, to me, this is one of the most uh, exciting uh, observation plan. Uh, so I would like to uh, show you, uh, without permission by uh, Makoto Sawada, who lead, who lead uh, this proposal, internet proposal, uh, but I assume this is okay. And uh, yeah, the W49B is very bright supernova, X-ray bright supernova remnant uh, with most prominent uh, recombined plasma. But I'm not going to talk about recombined plasma today. But another interesting uh, result, recent result, uh, another interesting uh, thing from the recent observation is that the new star detected uh, possible suprathermal uh, brain uh, uh, tail hard tail emission, possibly due to the suprathermal uh, brain surrounding. And if uh, this is real, uh, the electron contributing to uh, pro producing this emission should contribute to the thermal emission as well. So this is what we are going to confirm. And uh, yeah, so diagnostic for non max uh, And I think this, uh, first idea uh, came from the uh, grating crystal uh, spectroscopy uh, of the solar flare. Uh, this is the uh, spectrum from solar flare, uh, you know, obtained more than uh, about 40, 40 years ago. And uh, yeah, uh, we see a uh, lot of emission line in this helium like uh, ion series. And uh, yeah, uh, okay, uh, the, the authors claim, uh, this author, these authors claim that uh, the line flux ratio between the heading like reference line to the dynamic recombination line is a good diagnostic for the non Maxwellian electron uh, energy distribution. This is because uh, this satellite line uh, can be produced via the uh, electron uh, capture of the electron with the uh, energy uh, exactly at this value. But on the other hand, uh, Lenas line, uh, which is mainly, which mainly originates from the uh, excitation uh, from the ground state. And this can be produced by, with the free electron with the energy uh, of higher than this threshold value. So if there is a uh, tail, hard tail in the electron energy distribution, uh, the W to, oh well, re reference to satellite line, direct DR satellite line, flux ratio will be enhanced. Uh, but yeah, this, is, this should work. But actually Makoto uh, pointed out that uh, helium like beta emission from a K K uh, M shell to K shell uh, transition is even more sensitive to super thermal electron because the transition from the ground state to the M shell requires even higher uh, electron energy. So the point is that uh, in the, this crystal spectrum, the resolution is even better uh, than the, the resolution of the uh, microcarimeter, but the band pass is very narrow. But uh, microcarimeter has a wide band pass, so uh, wide, wide enough. So uh, this uh, contain, you know, easily contain, uh, easily detect the helium-like beta emission. So this diagnostic should work. And we are hoping to confirm this uh, in near future prism observation. And okay, so this is the last part of my talk. And uh, in addition to the capability of the non dispersive spectroscopy, uh, another advantage, uh, there is another advantage of microcorimeter. Uh, this is a wide, wide pan one pass from 0.3 to 12 kb with almost constant energy resolution. 
So which I think is uh, even more important for the supernova MM to study because uh, this capability enables us uh, to perform the high resolution spectroscopy using both ion cation and L shell emission simultaneously. What, what does it mean? So in young supernova remnant, uh, electron temperature measurement for the ion ejector, which is very important for to study uh, supernova, uh, is very challenging or always challenging because uh, quantum emission is uh, usually dominated by the synchrotron emission or the thermal emission from different component. And also k bit to k alpha ratio, which can be used uh, to constrain the electron temperature in cluster of galaxy, but is more sensitive to charge exchange in supernova remnant. Let me explain why. So this you is a- One uh, or two minutes left. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, uh, okay, hurry up. So this is the including question. Uh, you have three minutes for questions, but there's okay, lots okay, of- Okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, this, this plot is the uh, k-beta to k-alpha uh, intensity ratio. And in this regime, uh, CIE regime, uh, this purely depends on the electron temperature. But in the NEI plasma, uh, which is uh, common in supernova remnant, uh, this depends on the uh, charge state uh, rather than the electron temperature. This is because unlike in CI plasma high temperature with high temperature, uh, low ionized plasma, uh, the high uh, outer shell uh, shells are already occupied by the bound electron. So uh, only fluorescence emission will contribute to the K alpha emission, K alpha and K beta emission. This is why uh, this ratio is sensitive to charge, charge state. But uh, if, you, if we, we can uh, measure the iron L shell and K shell emission uh, simultaneously, it's very easy to constrain the electron temperature like this. And uh, okay, let me convince you uh, why this is important uh, briefly. And um, this is the, uh, these are the spectrum of Chandra ACES and XMM RGS of uh, the type 1 supernova remnant uh, N1O3B, uh, which is interacting with uh, circumstellar medium. And uh, yeah, we see a very strong emission line uh, whose uh, central energy is uh, 6.4 keV, which corresponds to ion 20 to 22. Uh, but uh, in RGS spectrum, the ion is dominated, dominated by ion 17. Uh, so these are inconsistent with each other. But we also see uh, oxygen 7 and 8. And uh, the, this flux ratio requires the electron temperature of around uh, 0.5 keV. And this temperature, uh, with this temperature, ion is also dominated by ion 17. So uh, I concluded that uh, th both of these emissions uh, origin, uh, originates from uh, circumstellar mat mat material. And here we see uh, iron 20, and the, this is consistent with the, K, uh, the uh, charge state uh, from uh, constrained from the uh, casual emission line, uh, casual emission line. So yeah, uh, I assume that I consider that this is associated with iron casual. So uh, to confirm this, I investigated uh, HETG first of the image and compare with the uh, ACES narrowband image. And yeah, it looks like these are very similar and the uh, ion 20 image is similar to the ion cache emission as, as I expect. So, uh, you know, with microcalimeter uh, observation, we will be able to uh, determine the electron temperature ion by ion. So this will help uh, disentangle the origin of each element and each ion. So that's all. So uh, what what is needed to uh, what is needed? So what is needed to identify new physics? And uh, this is an analysis beyond the st uh, standard software usage and knowledge of atomic physics. Of course, the later is more important. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you for the talk. Um, we have thirty seconds uh, for question. Okay. While you're typing the questions in the chat, um, there has been a longer discussion uh, on Slack. Um, that's centered on the availability to turning off and on individual lines and individual ions, um, not using your hack, but with, uh, in, in a scripted way, which is possible in specs and in ISIS. And there's also top secret Adam Foster Python tools, which will be made available, uh, which allow you doing that in uh, PySpec.